Hey guys, and welcome to the Lessons Learned Life Edition podcast. I have got Ian on, and I am extremely excited to um, get deep dive uh, into Ian's life, I suppose. Um, we've had Ian on already for the business edition of the podcast, so some of you might recognise his face. Um, and we've decided to get him back on for the life edition. So, Ian, again, introduce yourself. <laughs> Yeah, so thank you for having me on, Justine. I'm Ian, CEO and founder of Kilu, a life planning platform, helps people manage all their personal legal financial affairs, while also helping to record incredible legacies for their loved ones. And what a lovely platform it is. I mean, I've I've been around it. I've got an account on it. I think it's great. So if people haven't seen it or haven't checked it out, we will put the link in the bio and make sure you do, because it is, once you get into it, I think it's one of those... Um, uh, websites that you kind of get lost in it as well. You, you you start seeing new things that you want to get involved with. So um, yeah, if you haven't seen it, definitely go and check it out. Um, so easiest way to kind of start the life lessons one, the whole idea of this podcast is to show people that we're all, uh, we all go through tough times in our lives. There might be some pivotal moments in people's lives that kind of trigger an emotion or um, an experience that they then go, oh, the outlook of their life completely changes because of it. And they've now got a different focus, a different mindset, um, and they power forward. So that's kind of what we're touching on so that people can kind of go, I'm going through that and oh, other people have got through it. How how do I kind of deal with it? Um, so it's just trying to open it up and be quite authentic to listeners so that they can understand that other people go through stuff as well. Um, so I guess we can start with when I left school, when I left the womb, wherever you want to start. <laughs> um, yeah, I really. So, so life is a journey, you know, and I, I and it's it's not easy, you know. You're going to have amazing times in your life. You're going to have ch- times where you can. Why am I doing this? What and it's, and especially as a founder of the company, you're going to have really amazing days where everything just seems to happen for the right reason. And then the next day, you're at the bottom of a trough, and you're going, you know what? It would be much easier just to give up and go and work as the yeah. But I think, as I think we mentioned on the last podcast, it is a journey and you learn and you only hear once. There's a, there's a saying which I think is uh, you have uh, two lives and the, and the second one begins when you only realise you have one. And for me, it's about, right, we're, we're here for 70, 80, 90 years. It's going to be tough times. It's going to be great times. But just enjoy every day. Every day where you wake up is an absolute blessing. And no matter what you experience, you can take some valuable learnings from it as well. So when you're having a tough time, surround yourself with positive people. When things are going well, remember that tough times are ahead. You know, it's not a, it's not a flat journey. You're going to have the best times, tough times, but you will get through it. And as I mentioned on the last podcast, that's saying that if you're going through hell, keep going. Because yeah. why would you stop? So, yeah, life is a journey. It really, it really is. We've had the best times ever with Keely. We've had the best times in our family, but also I've also lost my sister and mum when they were both too young. And you can either let that kind of um, thing take over you and stop you, or you can be inspired by it to change lives. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people that have um, similar situations to you where they've lost a, a loved one, not just one or multiple, and your circumstance very close to each other. How did you, I know it's easier said than done, saying surround yourself with positive people and try and maintain that positive mindset. How did you find a way to kind of motivate yourself to, what what was it that inspired you to kind of get out of that very easily emotional pit that you can get into? Oh, it was tough. Don't get me wrong. My my mum was my my world. Yeah. So, so everything, so I, I spoke to mum on a daily basis, even when I was travelling, I'd call mum up. Mummy's boy. And when she was, oh, oh, absolutely, honestly, I was a nightmare. <laughs> um, and now I've got a daughter of my own, I'm even worse. But I think that from the day mum was diagnosed, I kind of started a grieving process then. And you kind of, you build up some walls, so you know that pain's going to come. You know there's going to be a day when that person is. So I think that when mum was given that diagnosis, and I still remember the day and the time, you build up a barrier. And then when mum passed away, I'd already been quite prepared for that kind of eventuality happen. And I would say I probably went through a period of four or five years of not feeling a lot. No one on the outside would know. You know, you've got this facade. Yeah. But it was only really when my daughter was born that all of a sudden I realised, right, Ian, you're a dad now. You know, your your job now is not to be a son, you're a father, and you have to provide for your family. 
you have to make sure you thought it. And all of a sudden, things change for me. It's grief is not a journey which is smooth. You're going to have amazingly good days. I used to find that on some days I'd be New Year's Eve, Mother's Day, Christmas. I'd really miss my mum and my sister. And there was a couple of beers down the line. You've got tears. But once again, it's you can either let that define you or you can say, okay, I've been through hell. And now what I'm going to do is try and change other people's lives. So that when they do go through that same process, it's easier. And for me, it's there's, there's people out there. And I, I, I like to meet other people who've been through the same process because there's people out there who are going to lose people today. 1,500 deaths in the UK each day. And that's 1,500 families that will be going through the same experience as I have. And I believe in life that we should always try and make sure we give back. So no matter what you what you do or, or your, your role in life, you know something more than other people. Now, if you can share your journey or story with them a little bit to try and improve their life, what a gift. And I think that's something that when you start doing that, it makes you feel better about yourself. So, yeah, I, for me, that yes, I went through hell and it came out the other side, but that has given me a drive to get up each and every day to, to help other people who will eventually go through the same experience. And if we can make their life just a little bit easier, that, what a gift that is. Yeah. And I mean, with uh, Kilo, it's you said that you kind of started building up, knowing that your mum was um, ill, that you kind of started to kind of understand what was get the, what was happening um, and kind of going through that grieving process uh, in your head. What the Kilo, I suppose, is that even before any of that happens, isn't it, is capturing those moments, as you were saying, um, capturing those moments so that when you get to that point, you, you're you just adding extra moments to that, not just, oh, my God, I, I, I haven't got this moment or I can't remember this or I don't have that video or that voice note and, and whatnot. So it's a great memory bank um, that people can start before any of that um, ever arises. Yeah, I, I think life is, life is a journey. And a lot of us take photos and a lot of us will take a video, but how many of us actually capture a moment? Yeah. So... So unfortunately with phones, you're behind the camera. So if, if I'm out with my daughter and my wife and I'm taking a picture, I'm not in it. So what I always do is I put the camera on selfie mode and I get all three of us in it. And then actually you put some context behind it. So if you're walking down the beach, it's then it's June the 15th, June the 15th, you're walking down the beach, Alex is 10 years old, we're going to go get some ice cream. We've got an amazing day. Now that's a moment in time. Now how many of us really do that? That's where I think the value is in actually recording moments like your first day at school or your daughter's first day at school. So you're capturing your daughter's walking down the stairs. It's got a uniform on. That is something which is so incredibly precious that you want to make sure that lives on. So in Kila, you can store all these magical things for a time in the future. They become the most important thing in your family's lives. 100%. I've... Um... I, I used to live on my phone, photos, videos, everything all the time. But I remember being at a concert and I remember looking, at the, the um, band was in front of us and all I saw was a sea of just phones. And no one was literally living in the moment. And it was, that moment mm-hmm. was really pinnacle for me because, yes, I want to capture the moment, but I also want to be in the moment as well. Um, so I love yeah. the fact that you turn it onto selfie mode and you're actually capturing it front facing rather than the actual nece- necessarily the, what's going on around you. Um, and we we were actually laughing myself and James the other day because we went to a, another concert and again everyone had the phones up and I make a point of trying to not put my phone out as much as possible. I capture little bits or whatever. Um, so I really like the concept of flipping it around and, and capturing the actual moment rather than the whatever's going on the entertainment I suppose. Yeah, we people take photos so they can remember it in the future and they don't actually enjoy the moment while it happens. And it, this is going back probably 22 years ago. I was in New Zealand with, with my ex and we were on, we were on a whale watching tour, uh, beautiful. And she had a phone up and she was trying to take a picture of the whales and she missed them all. <sighs> so I basically took, stood there and just go, well, I'm taking this in for me. Oh, yeah. And I took one photo, got them out. But we, we all do it. We all live behind our screens now. And what that does is that that's a degree of separation between you and the event. Yeah. So, so very much, flip it around, get yourself in it, get your friends in it, because that, that for me is where the magic is. Yeah, I think one of my favourite vid- uh, videos I've got that I've captured, and it was the first time I ever tasted an uh, oyster, 
And it was one of those things that I never thought anyone, I didn't even think anyone was videoing at the time, but it turned out to be the most hysterical video. <laughs> I clearly didn't like it at the time. I love oysters now, but I clearly didn't like it at the time. And it was just captured and it was all very kind of candid and stuff. And it's like, that's the thing that you want is those moments like that, that you, you can never kind of get back. So yeah, great. And it's not it. It, sorry, it's not. It's not even the big moments. It's the little ones. It's those little things which mean nothing, but actually they're the little magical ones. So you know, when like like my daughter, I've got a lovely video of her. She's ten, so she would have been about six or seven, and she was dancing in a bedroom, and she had no idea I was filming it. Now that one is hilariously funny, and that to me is hugely valuable. But when she's older, like she's ten now, when she's 40, 50, and she's got all these videos I've captured during her lifetime, that's going to be absolutely worth so much to her. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I think some of the best presents I've ever had has been like videos of of me and someone or friends or whatever been kind of compiled together and, and made into a memory. So really, I love that. Um, I suppose, well, obviously, there's been tri there's triggers and traumatic experiences like you've had that's kind of led you to where you are today and to create Kilo and um your outlook and stuff today. But is there any kind of positive experiences that you've been through that have shaped the outlook of your life today? Yeah, I, I think every everything you go through is an experience to learn. Everything you go through. So even those tough times, you know, you when you, I've had times, honestly, when I'm like, this is the hardest thing I've ever done. Why did I do this? And then you look back 12 months in the future and you go, well, actually, the reason I went through that is to learn. Yeah. And they, they say the toughest deal is made in the hottest fire. Like if you've never been challenged, if you've never had an experience to test you, uh, you're not going to grow. And if you stay in your comfort zone, you're not going to grow. So for me, every single thing I've been through since mum, mum and Jane passing away, right through to where we are today, going through investment rounds, talking on stage in front of hundreds of people, each of those things is devastatingly, you know, you panic before you do it, but then you do more of it and it gets easier and easier until it becomes a part of who you are. So the, the thing is, that I, I always say jump. No matter what you're thinking about doing, give it a go. I I, I, so I I never say no to anything, you know, I'll always give everything a go and I'll always go, oh, I remember that. that, but I, yeah, <laughs> I remember that, that. Oh, like, right, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to be one of those people who sat 97 years old in, in my, in, in, a, in, a, in a care home going, I wish I'd have done that, so in everything in life, give it all a go, say yes to everything, you know, within, within reason, make sure it's legal, but <laughs> Apart from that, just give everything a go because you can always look back and learn from a bad experience, but you can't have another go if that, if that opportunity is gone. So challenge yourself. Can you give me an example where you've, um, I'm going a bit left field here, but where you've put yourself into something completely outside of your comfort zone, you've actually ended up going horrendous at the time, but absolutely loved it. Oh, oh there's countless times. So <laughs> for me, I'll... I, I, I always say yes, you know, whether that is doing like speeches in front of people or challenging myself or we did, we did a three peak challenge for one of our charity partners. So never wrap up high. Yes, no I've got PTSD for this whenever you say three, the three peaks, because I've done the three peaks, yeah. the Yorkshire ones, and that was horrendous enough. Sorry to interrupt. You can carry on. <laughs> and it's, it's, so we said, yeah, we say yes to it. And we, so that was challenging three peaks in 24 hours. Then we did another one with a, uh, which was, the Cumbrian Challenge, which was 21 miles over the biggest peaks in the Lake District. Not only did we do that, we dressed up in inflatable horse costumes because we thought it would be hilarious <laughs> until there were 70 mile an hour winds on the top of the peak. Oh, no. Now, at the time, it was horrendous. And I deeply wish that a little quad bike would have picked me up and taken me <laughs> home. But we made it. Yeah. And if you can make that, you can make anything. So, so there's been times, obviously, we, we've been pitching to investors in the past. You stood up on stage. Your knees are absolutely bouncing. Your hands are shaking and you're terrified. But you get into that process. And the next time you do a pitch, you go, well, I made that one so I can do this one. And as you said, if you're not nervous in life, something's wrong. There's always times where you're going to be really go, why have I signed myself up for this? But then you've gone through the process. 10 minutes at the end of it, you get this massive endorphin rush, like, well, I can pretty much do anything. Yeah, you build. Why limit yourself? Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, like I said, give everything a go. You know, there's apart from jumping off harbour walls. So where we are in Cornwall, my daughter will jump off the highest harbour wall. I can't do it now. So we, we were down at the beach. I say do everything. Dragons. That's the one thing I can't do anymore, Justine. I'm 
get a hype. <laughs> See, I used to be a proper adrenaline junkie, but I was literally talking about it yesterday and I said, I much more prefer now. Like everyone's going, why didn't you go to the theme park? And I was like, hmm. Not really a fan. I, I think I've seen too many accidents on roller coasters. And then I actually value my back more and my neck more. And I just want to be safe on the ground. And I've just become that person. I was like, as I get older, I'm a little less adrenaline junkie kind of vibe. But I'll still say yes to everything. But <laughs> yeah, I, I like, like that. I, I love skydiving. That's one I thing. I, I don't mind that. Skydiving, never done a bungee jump. Most other things I'll give a go. But there's something now of when you're jumping off a 30 foot wall into water, my brain's just like, no, yeah. you're, you're not here. Not, you're not doing that. Yeah. There's a great uh, documentary on Netflix about um, called the world, it's something world playground or something like that. And they do um, free jumping off walls into uh, a sea water. And it's just, just no, not at all. If you miss it by a millimeter, you, you're dead. And oh, it's just, it's not for me. No, um, no, not for me. You touched on it a little bit earlier um, about making sure that you speak to people in these times of kind of, um, you know, when you, you might be a little bit overwhelmed or going through certain situations. I think it's really important to kind of um, revisit that because, I mean, I'm the perfect example of if I'm going through something dead stressful or something that's troubling me, I shut off to everyone. Um, you can tell from my the way I talk and acting that there's something going on and I'm, I wear it all on my face. <laughs> But I'm very reluctant to kind of open up to people. And you say surround yourself with positive people. I think there's a lot of people in the world that think their friends are friends necessarily, and they might not be the right people that are going to inspire them to, to move forward. So what's your thoughts on how you find the right people to kind of get you out of those um, situations? Well, so I've got a really broad mix of friends from, and, and business association colleagues. and it's, Everyone's different and everyone has... Uh, uh, plus points and negative points in terms of what what they like to do. So I've got friends of mine who will drop a hat and do everything for you. I've got other friends of mine who are all more businessy based. And depends what I'm going through. So sometimes I'm going through a business challenge and or something's at work and I'm, I'm a bit stressed over something. And I'll actually just say, well, who is the best person to speak to about this? So not everyone will be perfect for every situation. So it's just kind of find somebody go, okay, I'm going through this problem. What would you do? And just, I think probably half the thing is just say, just uh, expressing you have a problem. Like no one wants to appear weak. Yeah. You know, you, you know we all we're all going to have problems in life, in work, in our relationships, being parents. You know, there isn't a book on telling you how to do everything perfectly. So just be finding the right person who's been through a similar experience, who's willing to give you some time. It, it's um just letting it out as well. Like as you said, you 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 keep it inside. And we can all do that. But actually, that's what I did when mum passed away. So for six, for five, six years, I held that grief inside of me. But actually, when I let it all go, that's when you can start dealing with stuff. So the same with if you've got an issue or something you want to talk about, find somebody who's been there and says, Justine, come and see me. We'll go and have a walk. We'll go and do something. We'll get out of this. Uh, and let's just talk it through. And a lot of the times, you'll actually come up with a solution yourself rather yeah. than be told this is what you should do. Yeah, but you've given yourself that mindset to kind of open up to kind of other things, answers to those situations. I think it's um, one, just getting off your chest, I think is an incredible thing. But I also think a lot of people like to help and people think right. that they're reluctant to ask because they don't think people have got the time or whatever, but people like to help people. So actually just being aware that, that maybe someone does want to jump in and, and help you in your situation, I think um, that's probably a yeah. big Um. <laughs> No, I was, I was going to say, I met a couple of founders last week who's just got an amazing company. And they said, look, have you got 10 minutes of your time? I know you're incredibly busy. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Because I've had people help me at this stage. So I sat down with them for an hour, hour and a half and just gave them some basic thoughts. And for them, it was game changing in terms of actually, well, I didn't think about it this way. So never be afraid to ask. Yeah. Because those, most people will want to help you on your journey. Yeah, totally agree. Um, when normally when we're finishing off a podcast, we say about resources. I think you've again you're full of tips and tricks and knowledge and um great take homes that people can take. Is there any specific resource that you would recommend? I know you love your books and your audio books um to help people through personal problems or issues or emotions and such. 
Yeah, there's so as you said, Audible is fantastic. So I'm one of these guys whose mind just wanders. So if I'm if I'm reading a book, all of a sudden I'll be thinking about something else or about work. Audible to me is the ability to put a book on, go and have a long walk, and actually soak it all up. So I use Audible. LinkedIn is an incredible tool for anyone starting a business. There's amazing groups on there. There's other people that can help you. Uh, and then just look in your local area as well, because on Facebook, there's other groups of people who might be similar minded. Like if you're one of these guys who like getting up in the morning and going for an ice cold dip in the sea, I'm not one of those people. There's people out there. So try and find a tribe of people like you, because that makes all the difference. When you don't want to get up for an early morning cold water swim, you know you have to, otherwise you're letting your friends down. So just surround yourself with like-minded people, I think, is the key. Yeah, perfect. As always, it's been a pleasure to have you on, Ian. So thank you very much. I will be uh, putting links to all of your websites, how people can connect with you. And um, to everybody, if you're wanting to come on a podcast yourself, there will be a little link below. So get in touch. Thank you very much, Ian. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Justin. It was a pleasure to talk. Thank you very much. And I will see you again. Take soon. care. Bye. Cheers. Take care. Bye.